Health Professional Chapter and the Sustainability Manager of the Sassy Center for Sustainability Management. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We're very honored to have with us um, Alexander Poffler, who is the former CEO of Mercedes-Benz Thailand and now full-time faculty of SACIN with us today. And he will be talking to us about uh, sustainable leadership through creativity and innovation. Um, Alex um, attended the University of Tübingen, Saarbrücken, Duisburg, and attended classes at Harvard and NYU. So without further ado, please give him a round of applause to welcome him. You have, you have uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. Okay, then I have to read the house. We have such a cozy, um, such a cozy group. Let me briefly tell you why I'm interested in, in creativity and innovation. I am uh, an accountant by background, so I'm a CPA, and, uh, and I did my PhD with a German FBI and the German tax prosecution for our tax law. That was also kind of cheering me up when I was doing business here and had to deal with the grey market and uh, buy some hands for with tax for money laundering and corruption. So uh, another person probably would have been very frustrated. Uh, let's jump into uh, the, the film. I have quite some uh, photos and slides, therefore I call it film. Please interrupt me when you have a question. I think that's better when we have at the end not so much time. Okay, um, I think, I, and I'm convinced uh, about this sentence, we, we really need a lot of creativity in today's world. Uh, there are a lot of wicked problems, that's a technical term, and, uh, and messes, uh, that's even worse than wicked problems. I will quickly tell you later on what it is, um, a wicked problem and a mess. And uh, I have somehow found a way uh, with this creativity innovation uh, approach which uh, at least doubled the sales wherever I was. In, in Thailand I could the triple it in spite of the great market. So that was quite a lot of fun. Simple problem is um, when you know the problem and the solution, basically when you have a water leakage, even then you take two plumbers, they come up with the same solution. That is very easy. Uh, a complex uh, problem is uh, when you know the problem but you don't know the solution. I give you from the uh, sustainability uh, side uh, two examples. Uh, a very good example was the end of the line. Uh, we know the problem, and the solution would just stop fishing for two years. Trust it. And then, then the problem would be solved, but it's not easy to find your solution. And tell Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi Corporation, I think is the other bad guys. Another complex problem is was Fukushima. Fukushima, I think it was Mitsubishi Corporation uh, in the film, uh, what we saw. Fukushima, uh, you deal here with the, the half pipe of uh, enriched uh, uh, nuclear uh, energy. And uh, a wicked problem, now we come to the, the interesting part of the problem. It's not known and the solutions also are known. Let me give you a few um, explanations for a wicked problem. I love the term wicked. Um, it's understood. It, it's not understood until after the formulation of the solution. A wicked problem has no stopping rule, so you don't know when you are done. Uh, it's normal and unique. And it's a one-shot operation, so there is no chance for learning curve. Um, to understand a very, a very wicked problem, you really have to also look at a uh, mess. So this is a wicked problem, uh, I would say, and this is a wicked problem, um, where we don't know uh, the problem and, and we uh, don't know the solution yet. Uh, messy problems are when you have several interacting wicked problems. Uh, now this is uh, super <laughs> uncomfortable. He put it in a nutshell how we solve it. You cannot solve these problems uh, with the same level of thinking when they were created. Uh, I, I like this definition by 
a good elbow a lot. Now, Fridley is thinking new things, you can imagine, just think new things, uh, come up with new um, structures, new ideas. Um, now, the more commercial form is an innovation that's doing new things. And uh, people always say, I, I'm not creative. Everybody thinks, but when you talk about creativity, about artists, painters, uh, musicians, but actually we are creative without even thinking of it. Uh, so there's a structure. Let, let me tell you uh, how I did my business and how uh, this was intertwined with creativity. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, quote from uh, Hermann Hesse, novel uh, Siddhartha, listen to the river, that's what the ferryman said to um, young Siddhartha when he wanted to know how to get enlightened. Uh, reflective listening, I added the word reflective, uh, is, is something very important to understand things. Let me give you an example from uh, what I observed in the classes here at Sassi, sitting in the back. And uh, I was in Paul Tiffany's uh, picture. So you can see when you sit in the back very nicely what people look at on their laptop. And I came up with six categories of students uh, who were partly listening, you know, we play. You have the gamers, people who play games, who have the um, day traders. It's really risky to do day trading in a lecture. You have uh, the shoppers. Interesting enough, uh, female and male students, they shop uh, with the same passion, <laughs> only different uh, styles. You have the late covers, of course. Uh, it's usually not five minutes before. Like in Germany, it's rather, let's say, 15 minutes after. Uh, you have, uh, by natural, you have some talk. Uh, which is good when you're exchanging ideas. And you have, um, I would say, 40% to 50% listeners, hopefully reflective listeners. And uh, I like this very much. So now, I have three ways to, to, to listen. So this, for example, I did in Greece as in Thailand as in Japan. I call it management by desking. What does that mean? I moved with my desk in the different departments. So this was not my office, this was the accounting department in Athens. And you see uh, things totally different when you get out of your comfort zone. I mean, for example, I asked you the question, why do you have so uh, huge paper piles and uh, in, in, invoice piles? And so so I, I learned all of a sudden to look at the company in a different way. I didn't get a photo for this scene, but I, have a, I did something which is called Tea with Good Alex. So where I invited about four of my uh, staff, not managers, to have talk with me about what they liked, what they didn't like. And the, the third thing I did is uh, I, I, I turned one minute into one hour. Um, when I moved from the car to the office, I just spent a lot of time talking to people and listening and, and feeling the piles of it. Now, has a very interesting article in the Howard Business Review by three guys from Harvard. I have uh, later on the source for you. They, it's called the DNA, the Innovators DNA. What do innovators like the famous Steve Jobs and this uh, away from, from Amazon and, and, and others? What do they really do? First of all, they, they are very good in questioning. They question uh, with a lot of passion. Secondly, they are very good in observing things. That's what I also like to do. I, I, I'm basically a vacuum cleaner for five years. So this little sugar bag I found uh, in the Ananta Hotel in And this was my message uh, uh, to the service people. You know, how do you explain a 17, 16 year old, uh, uh, maybe high school dropout, what is service? And service is very abstract. You can't smell it, you can't eat it, but you feel immediately when it's not there. So I use this to explain to them what is service. It's in the little things, in the detail. So always important how do you get the message across. Now, when I 
put this together. So we talked about, before we talked about problems and, and solutions and, and, and ideas, which you basically have to get when there are problems. But you come up with ideas and innovations also when there is no problem. For example, um, somebody observed that kids don't like to wear the same socks. Actually, I think it's a great idea. Why do you have to always have the same pairs? And they, this person came up with this little mismatch. And uh, actually, uh, uh, you should have a look at her shoes. Um, and your shoes. Look at the shoes from the side. And this is not uh, an idea which came from a problem. But right? it's just an idea, it's just a gag. I like it. I couldn't. I checked the shoes on the internet, I didn't find them. Oh, the next time I have your shoes here I'll on. Give you the <laughs> um, I guess I, I found it during the during the match on Monday in the in the embassy, somebody told me in Berlin, they have they started with this public viewing in Berlin. And they, they, they clean out one one soccer stadium and ask the people to bring sofa uh, into the stadium. And what they did, they, the screen was then framed with wallpaper with little flowers, you know, like a typical German uh, living room. It's a big party. I think the guy who had this idea um, has a good, good business. It's a gap, so there was no problem, but somebody came up with this great idea. Experimenting is another one in the DNA for innovators. I call it toss and take a twist and tweak, so just playing around, the Japanese would say, maybe kind of zen. Networking, the, the learning curve and networking, and, and that's exactly what we're doing at the moment, is, is very steep. And um, they compare also people who basically sit in their study and try to come up with an idea and with a solution. And another one who is doing networking, talking to people, he has much more Idea. So um, I like this from people saying uh, you become whom you spend time with. If you're always together with boring people, uh, you also become boring. I don't like that. So that's the reason why I really look how to spend my time. Associating is another thing for the brain. And now we're getting closer to our uh, lazy piece of meat. One neuroscientist said, so what you can see here is really our toolkit uh, for white color is very important. That what I show the students always is uh, 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 another slide uh, for the motorbikers to, to really spend a good money, a good amount of money for a, a good helmet. A good friend of mine, the CEO of Deutsche Bank, had just an accident and, and, uh, and he survived with his motorbike, I'm sure, only because he had a very good helmet, so something like 500 euro. No, no, no. You can get at uh, Big C, I think something about 800 baht. Um, and uh, Schumacher probably had also a good helmet. So you have to be uh, quite a spender. Now we have about 100 billion euros and more. So uh, some say when you drink alcohol, you lose neurons, but we have plenty of them. So uh, we can be a little bit relaxed. Now, the trick of these neurons is that each of these neurons is connected network to 10,000 adults. Uh, I heard uh, and, and I read actually that the female brain is about 120 to 130. In average, when you take millions of brains, uh, lighter, less weight, however, um, much tighter connected, which is, which is the most important thing. Um, well, I show you now how to fire up your brain, how to trigger. You can do many things. Uh, you see the, 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 the stack of business cards, that what, what, it's one of my exercises in, in the lecture. Uh, when you go through your business cards of the last month, and you, you go through, and you have super uh, many ideas, which you can just write down. You link people up and uh, stories, words, numbers, mm -hmm. name them bring ideas, analogies, or bring ideas. Now, let me show you five brain tactics which I'm using on a daily basis. First of all, you have to manage stress. It's, uh, uh, I have uh, interviewed about 1,000 people, including the, the, the teacher of Larry Page and Sergey Grit from Google. And uh, 
uh, what you could see about 10% of these people, they want stress. The Greeks, for example, need stress. You need deadlines and be creative. 40% they like a nice mixture, a little bit stress, a little bit relaxed, because stress turns on, but not too much. And 50 really um, like more uh, relaxed. I belong to the green ones, um, to be creative. So, so in a way, when those of you who know a keyboard or a, a, a workstation of a keyboard, there is one one little knob uh, that's written velocity, so where you can really basically then make the sound more hectic. So this kind of um, metaphor I always have in my mind when I think of uh, how to mix stress for four tactics. So uh, the first tactic is you have to produce as many ideas as you can because a good idea comes from a choice of many. So somehow you have to produce them and I'll show you how you do that. Secondly, you should not think straight to an issue or to a hard result, but more around the corner, a little bit too detour thinking. The, the third one is um, you have an old concept, but you massage it, you play around with it, and make out of it a square or a rectangle, a triangle. That's how I came, for example, to the, uh, to the main concept of my PhD. The last concept is, I would say, the most advanced way you. Mostly we have somehow a big idea that, that is this cloud, then we get new information, new ideas, and then we, we can bank on our old ones, uh, we revisit them, and then come to an innovation. <coughs> so basically, uh, the, 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 the ideas get triggered best when you're under stress. I found a little bit less stress than you can think a little bit more flexible, unusual, and the more it becomes let's say, original, uh, you should be more relaxed. Uh, examples. This is an interesting one that was from this design company, IDEO in Silicon Valley. They had the task to uh, make the, the, the process in a, an operation room more effective, more efficient. And they, they what they did, they studied the Formula One. How do they change title? How do they work together in a team? Um, so, but this is a, a, a principal way how you can get ideas. Um, you have to do this uh, more, more than often, more than less. Um, I'll show you where I do that. I'm every morning on this red uh, with my with three things. Actually, I have my waterboard here. I have my yellow marker. Here, one American asked me, so why don't you go with a candy bar on the grid? I said, no, sorry, it's not a candy bar, it's a marker. And then I have this uh, to write them on my papers. Uh, and I sort them out, you can see here, I sort um, articles which are on a file, only the second time, the ones I throw away and I to effect. So, uh, flexibility, detour thinking. Let's go to the Berlin Wall when it was falling. Most of the cameramen were making pictures like this on the west side. There was one guy, he went to the other side and got this shot and, and got the award. So he was really going around and, and doing not the obvious, he did something different. Uh, another thing, that was uh, the earthquake in Christchurch in New Zealand. Um, there, there came some people uh, to the brilliant idea, okay, fine, there was an earthquake, and we just take containers and make uh, the retail shops uh, with funky colors. I, I look at this, at this shopping center, it's great. So you can make out of a very difficult crisis situation also something very creative. Let me give you some ideas uh, regarding this. Now, I'm a hopeless John Lennon fan. Um, I have about 20 John Lennon uh, t-shirts, so they look all the same, so sometimes people think I have no, I'm only in this point. Some of the dealers once asked me whether I had a shower in the morning, um, and some dealer meeting. So anyway, the, the, the John, Lennon, John Lennon had a mini, uh, and I had this union check on top, 
And I was thinking before the Olympics in Athens, I, I do the same with a smart. We don't sell the smart here, but it's a real funky car. No matter whether you are the, the boss of a hospital in, in Greece or a secretary, it's, it's really uh, also not a car which is uh, regarded cheap. So what we did, we, we didn't put it on top because the spot is rather high compared to the main. We put all the uh, flags on the side and we came in Vogue and in, in so many magazines, even in Playboy magazine, uh, I was with this idea. Uh, now come to the last one, we connect the dots. And with flowery ideas, new ideas. I recommend you to read also this book, Opposable Mind, that's the dean of uh, um, uh, at Toronto Business School. Was. Um, uh, and he brings examples how we integrate contradicting ideas. Um, well, let's go to the end of the line. Basically, uh, an idea is that uh, solve the problem. And one, one idea would be um, to really target Mitsubishi. You, you help me, Takushan, if I'm wrong. I think one, one thing the Japanese certainly don't like an embarrassing situation. They don't like that. Nobody likes but the chat is like uh, by far not. So uh, this could be a way of a solution in my idea. And uh, anyway, you, you just have to go to many old ideas. That's what I do on a daily basis. Uh, what you collect. And, and old is really anything. Old can be one minute old. Let me give you, uh, finally, before we are finished, uh, one idea or a, a process of what I did to write these uh, three books within 12 months. However, with the preparation of uh, eight years. So I was starting basically about this subject what I outlined you in 2005. Yeah? And starting last year, I popped out these books, one in English, one in Thai, and now the recent one three weeks ago in Chinese. And that's traditional Chinese from Taiwan. So this will be also in then the simplified version in mainland China. And, and I'm preparing one in, in, in Japanese. So but everything started really from this checklist where I explained to my employees what, how to work in a creative way. And, um, and then the, the result basically comes out with a lot of preparation up front. Uh, interesting example, the gentleman from Scotland you probably know this John Lennon song, Nowhere Man, uh, that de describes a little bit the process of John Lennon, how he got his songs, but he was beating himself up, and then almost all of a sudden everything came um, and uh, he had the song in words and music. Similar thing was with Steve Jobs, everybody knows this story. He dropped out of Stanford and then uh, visited calligraphy glasses and he liked them so much, it was so beautiful and then he started this, this typeface, renaissance, how they call it. Well, uh, let me finish now, nearly on time. Uh, interesting is really, we are learning in, in business school these concepts, SWOT analysis, marketing mix, dynamic capabilities, my uh, brain tactics that is fortified. It's basically nothing uh, else than to align your brain and focus, for example, on these four spot fields and uh, um, kind of animate and inspire the brain. Because, as, as I said in the beginning, of the it's not for me, but a neuroscientist, a uh, very famous guy, I'll show you uh, right now the, the book which you should read. Uh, these are the Innovators. This, this book by Gregory Burns is a neuroscientist and he uh, explained, uh, uh, he used the word iconoplast, but it's basically innovator. He explained there uh, three things uh, an innovator has to do. And in this book, he also said uh, the brain is a very lazy piece of meat. So when you are not somehow uh, triggering your brain with something, like for example, these uh, things I showed you over the, the spot um, concept or uh, the other things. The brain is just kind of high. So thank you very much. This was it. And if you have questions, I'm here.
was good. Yes, uh, well, I remember you said you have been in Greece and Japan and Thailand. I was in six countries. Six uh, I worked in, in New York, I worked in, in Asker, also London. Uh, I worked in Germany, of course, uh, in, in Japan and Greece, in, in this sunny country. And when I signed my retirement plan in uh, 2005, I did not know that I will retire here. <laughs> Um, my question was, um, you said that you were able to either double or even triple uh, the sales. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering when you would go to a new location, a new country, mm -hmm. how did you start the whole process? Did you do management testing first or did you ask them no, to no, no, uh, actually this question I received in April 2009 from the press. Yeah. Uh, and, and they say, well, how do you change? Uh, what, what do you change now? I said, first of all, I change nothing. I will just listen to the river uh, and, and observe and uh, I will work on a triple trust program I call it. So first win the trust of your boys, second for your dealers, your business partners and thirdly uh, the customers come then automatically. So, so that, that, that was for me very important. For empathy is very important. So because you deal constantly with a new culture, the Greeks are uh, certainly behaving in a different way than the Thais and the, the Japanese the same. Uh, I was spending my life uh, 16 years in Japan, I liked it very much. Greece, also interesting, but I wouldn't stay 16 years there. So, so I think you know, once I said you have to behave like a sponge, sucking information, uh, like a lobster, it's a very sensitive animal, the lobster, and like a, a bat. That means when, when, when you move around, you fly around, it's good to have people saying, Alex, when you con con continue to fly in this direction, you crash against the wall. So that, that has something to do with the triple trust. Uh, because you're a, as an expert, you're highly paid uh, illiterate. That, that is, is good. So you need the trust of uh, the secretary. Yeah, it's a fact. Uh, you, have, you have the skills, um, hopefully survival skills, but you, you are an editor. You cannot, you cannot read and write them. You put your ear. Good question. Alex, uh, yeah. I'd like to ask if you've ever found yourself in a very stressful situation work-wise. And, and how you dealt with it? Okay. Well, I have my, my technique. I go every day uh, to the gym. I have to do that anyway because I like beer. <laughs> <laughs> Germans like beer, especially in summer. The problem is here's every day summer. <laughs> I will see my dilemma. So I would also this morning. Uh, I am about now, I have the luxury, one and a half hours I spent in the gym and in Kumba. Uh, the second, the thing is when, when you have a stress situation, usually it's about people or deadlines, usually people. So then you have to somehow try to get this emotional stress, stress in a situation where it's more rational. For example, if you hate someone, uh, you have a real asshole, excuse my French, a real <laughs> asshole either as a, a employee or a boss. Uh, so what I usually do then, I turn this into a case study. Yeah, so I, 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 for example, I had one Greek, he was highly thinking about himself, but he was lazy, simply lazy. So I tried to uh, use all motivational concepts uh, on him. So I, I studied this and looked into uh, business books and I made a case study out of it. And we used this person for the ID essay of myself. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, we did we made a research out of this person, uh, and, and, and that, 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 that tones down the emotion. There, there was a very interesting Zen master. He was the general manager of Mitsubishi Bank in Tokyo. I didn't know that he was a Zen master. He had another trick. He said, whenever the person comes, he hates. He wishes him something. Uh, Silently, of course. He wishes him something very good. And, and that changes basically the attitude. So you have to see how you 
can manage your emotions. There's a very good book about this by Goldman, David Goldman, uh, Emotional Intelligence. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. And actually, I have a book here which I highly recommend. He's also one of the three um, authors, uh, The Creative Spirit. That was a TV series. You can, of course, have a look at the book, TV series in the United States. And there's also the, the creativity pool of Stanford Michael Ray. So, yeah, and it's really fun to read and uh, write about creativity. But, but this is, uh, you have to handle also stress in a creative way. Uh, but uh, many people uh, do other things. I mean, they, they do meditation. Uh, there are meditation exercises also here. Um, you just have to see what, what's best for your body. But sport is always good. Or drinking beer. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Last question? Yeah. If you have any question. Yes, please. I'm happy to be in English country. What are you doing when you begin to, to move to a new country? Oh, I, uh, yeah, I have. This is a very good question. Uh, I have a 100 days checklist. I immediately start the 100 days checklist. Uh, uh, first, I start uh, to find out what kind of people uh, I am expecting there. So I look who will be my vice president, vice president sales, the CFO, and so on. What channel managers? Uh, what are the main banks? Uh, you can find so many things so on the internet. Before I go, yeah. When I was in Greece, uh, when I moved to Greece from Japan, I did this. And then come special things. For example, uh, in Greece, there was, uh, I moved 2003, 2004 was the Olympics. So I was thinking about uh, what will happen. Uh, you know, this was uh, after September 11, 2001. So I was uh, preparing myself for something like that. Uh, and I had a crisis management training and I came up with the idea that I checked how many Muslim uh, um, embassies are in Greece and I was surprised how many, I think about 16, including Turkey. And then I decided that always on National Day we send some flowers to these embassies. And it's all about goodwill. So, so I, I, the, the, the thing is that you have in crisis management, you have to handle the crisis before it comes. So, so I don't know whether you remember the riots in Los Angeles, where one street was totally smashed, but one shop was not smashed. Guess what? Guess what? McDonald's. Because, of course, they wanted to continue eating McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> so, this in mind, I was thinking, okay, you were saying it's not McDonald's. But let's make it super steady. And uh, so. How long have you kept up this before you go out? Three months. Three months. And then as soon as I came, I used this black uh, this checklist. Um, and basically, I structured the functions of a company <coughs> so, uh, PR, finance, HR, and so on. Yeah? And then you get familiar with it, with the country. And, and what I did then immediately, when I went, I remember in Athens, one Sunday, I was walking the whole street from midtown Athens to where I live to see all the car dealers, and I looked inside, so uh, unclean ashtrays, old coffee tubs, tubs. You, you, you get a feeling for the culture. I, I visited the music, the food, Experience people. So I, and because I'm a highly, a highly paid illiterate, so I need to somehow understand how they tick. What's their sweet spot? What is the sweet spot of a Greek? What's the sweet spot of a Japanese, of a German, of when you go to Germany? Now here in this region, a Vietnamese, Malay, uh, you know, they tick differently. It starts with a religion. So you have to prepare. Another thing is very good to have a good language teacher. That's also something you can ask her 
uh, about the rituals and so on and so on. It's quite much. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. A big round of applause for Alex. Also. <laughs> so, on behalf of our sustainability um, management center and the Atlantic Health Bank Confidential Chapter and Sassinama Alumni Association, I'd like to give you a little token of appreciation. I thought you would give me your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, we'll go shopping. <laughs> of ideas. Thank you all very much for coming and we look forward to seeing you next time.